Today, I'm with Bing Zhuang, and we're going to talk about how sensitives and empathics can deal with overwhelm. So for those of you who feel like sometimes you're misunderstood by the world for, for being, quote unquote, too sensitive, or maybe you're, uh, you know that you're more empathic than most people, I think this presentation will really be helpful to you. Um, Bing, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, so let me just briefly share your um, your background and then your bio, and then we'll get into the presentation. So uh, what Beings does is she helps sensitive souls to understand and manage their sensitivity with gentleness. And in fact, some people call her the gentleness coach. So she helps uh, clients to be gentler on themselves by understanding their unique challenges of their sensitivity that are often invisible or misunderstood by other people. And she uses the framework called human design, which she'll talk about a bit in this presentation. Um, and so her, she helps her clients to unwind their feelings about the challenges in their life and to release anxiety, fatigue, and overwhelm. And it can even happen during a single session with her clients. So if you're interested in um, working with Bing's, definitely reach out to her and, and try out a session with her. I think you'll be quite pleased. So Bing's, thank you so much for doing this. And um, I'll let you take it away because I know you have a uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, Judge. So I'll get started to share the slides. Okay, Great, so, there it is. So this is my uh, business name, Bing's Healing Light. And I just want to share a few things about understanding and managing your sensitivity through human design. So uh, first, let's, let me explain what I mean by being an empath. So because there are so many uh, definitions out there. So the definition that I really love is that an empath feels the outside really strongly internally. So whatever you see is like you are looking out the window and you are sensing whatever's happening on the outside of the window really strongly on the inside. And it is easy for an empath to get overwhelmed by what's happening on the outside. So I have this uh, little analogy of using Lego blocks. If it's like you're building your own beautiful tower of your unique size Lego blocks and suddenly somebody just throws you a bunch of uh, a few blocks that are of a different size. And no matter what you do, you just can't interlock them onto your own tower. And that can manifest as uh, feeling really frustrating, feeling angry, feeling tired. And that's what overwhelm can feel like. You're constantly trying to match external energies. You're tr constantly trying to deal with the external energies that are coming to you. And so this is what overwhelm can feel like at stage two. So if you, as this continue to go on, somebody, some people might go back to um, getting conditioned by those external energies. So it's like uh, you start to, you want to move on, but you're not quite sure how to deal with that overwhelm. So you just uh, stack them up onto your own tower, knowing that it might fall anytime. And this is like, this is, um, this represents conditioning where you already start to accept those, see those external energies as, as yours, but it will manifest as pain and suffering when the tower eventually starts to fall because uh, it's not stable anymore. And that's how conditioning can look like. And let's go to healthy sensing. So if you move to a healthier way of coping with it, you start to realize that, oh, um, these blocks are actually not yours. And it's not your responsibility to use these blocks to build your tower. So you can just let them go. That's what um, a healthy way of dealing with those 
external external energies can look like. And to move even one step further, you start to know that um, have this understanding that hey, these blocks are actually from Jenny, and you start to appreciate this as a part of Jenny, Jenny's good qualities, and you start to through these blocks you start to understand Jenny even more, or even you might feel inspired to learn from Jenny through these blocks, but without using them on your own tower. And can you, can you um, describe what you mean by Jenny? Or Jenny is just the person you're, you're talking to the... the uh... Okay, uh, let me start sharing. So um, to describe the scenario, it's about um, the, the blocks, some blocks being thrown at you. Mm -hmm. And these blocks might be from someone you know, uh, yeah. I see. I see. And so, you start to appreciate yes. that person more or ah, even learn from that person. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so let's uh, go back. So, what I'm finding is that uh, this is uh, human design can really help you to understand the various aspects that you might be sensitive in so in human design we use your birth data to generate a unique chart and for every person there are these like nine energy centers which which is something like the concept of chakras that more people are more uh, aware of so you have these nine geometric shapes that represent different themes in your life. And the interesting thing is that you see that some of these shapes are colored, which means that they are defined. You have consistent energies that are radiating from these centers. And some of them will be white, which indicates you are open. And these are the areas where you might be empathic in. So it's very fun to, through this visual chart of uh, you, to understand where you might be sensitive in. So for example, this is my chart. And um, I got a really aha moment, a big aha moment when I saw that I'm open in my emotional solar plexus, which means that I, I tend to sense emotional energies from others in an amplified manner. So uh, this is very enlightening and uh, it, make, it made me be, be more aware of what's happening emotionally in my world so that I can start to release those emotional overwhelm. And the other, another center would be the spleen which governs your immune system and the fight or flight fears that you might have, the instinctual fears. So um, being open in this um, can make me feel more open to, more sensitive to the physical symptoms of the people around me. So for example, I was working in the hospital uh, for an internship and that really uh, made me feel very, very overwhelmed because I was feeling all the um, the symptoms of their health states. Uh, some of them have um, very poor health, like uh, they might be injured or they might have cancer and all that. And I'm just um, amplifying all this in myself. So uh, that's why I felt that I had to, I, I wasn't able to cope with working in that sort of environment. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation and I just um, want to go further into sharing why it's important to be aware of how you're sensitive, especially uh, during this global crisis. Uh, let me just go back to 
the Lego chat. But so as a society, as we continue to progress, we'll start to lose some of the conditioning that we might have. We are starting to be more conscious of how certain energies are really not ours. We are starting to be aware of why our tower is shaky, is, uh, might be a risk of falling because we are accommodating certain energies that are not ours, us, ours. So a lot of us will be going into overwhelm, which is actually a good thing because we are more aware of what's uh, yeah. what's not yours. I want to ask a question. Um, when you say energies that are not ours, can you give maybe an example or two? Oh, sure. So, for example, if you've been living with your father since you were a child um, for many years and your father is uh, usually an angry person. So, uh, as a child, you won't know that you are sensitive to his anger. So you might cope with it by either being um, uh, copying his anger, feeling angry all the time, or attracting people who are always angry. Yeah. So as you become older, you start to realize that oh, I I've been um, being conditioned by my father's anger. And when you recognize this anger is not yours, you can let it go. Yeah, and mm. you might also feel extremely sensitive to anger now that you're more aware. So this is why I call by um, going to a stage of overwhelm. Uh, that's, that's going, you are going to feel really um, have a heightened sensitivity, which is actually good because you're noticing uh, your own energetics wiring and you're disconnecting with energies that the anger that's not yours. Got it. That's, yes. Is that clearer? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Um, and also certain aches and pains, I find that some people tend to absorb the aches and pains of their partners uh, or their kids. So especially as, as a mother. <laughs> as a uh, mother, I can, like, you know, they always, they tend to fall, um, uh, they get injured easily, you know, baby, as babies and toddlers. And I will feel that fear, that heightened fear, and I will feel their pain. <laughs> so um, being able to discern that that's not yours is, is actually very healthy. Yeah, so I really want to um, have an online course which is designed to help them understand and appreciate that, appreciate why they are overwhelmed. And I hope that through this course, they will start to sense and be more discerning of where these energies are from and also move forward to actually using their sensitivity as a gift to understand and learn from their open centers. That's great. So when you are helping clients to kind of progress on these stages, um, tell us how you do that. Uh, there's a you know, part of what you do, I think is kind of coaching or counseling. I think part of what you do, I know part of what you do is um, healing, right? Energy yes. healing at distance healing. And then you also have the human design that you, um, so tell us, you know, maybe, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but okay. yeah, share with us the, the, prog the process. Here. Uh, so what I would do is I would have, a, I would ask them to generate their human design chart. And from the chart, I can actually sense energetically into the health of each energy center. So uh, for example, if that person is open in the emotional solar plexus, um, sometimes I can sense that there's a primary emotion inside, like anger or sadness. And then through, I will converse with my client and ask what's happening with, uh, you know, why there's sadness there? Do you know 
who it might originate from. And then we start to have this self-exploration of understanding and being able to let go. Because I feel that when you have the understanding that, oh, this is from someone else, it's easier to let go. And it's easier to appreciate the peace that's always uh, with you. Because when uh, people have a healthy, open emotional solar plexus center, uh, when they're by themselves, they actually feel a lot of peace. And so that's a good way to gauge if you need some uh, help in health, in improving the health of that center. Yeah, and do, feeling, hmm? yeah, and do most of your clients come to you already with a human design chart or do they usually need to, I guess you said generate and how, how would you generate the, the chart? Uh, uh, there's a link, there's a free link that you can use to generate your chart. And some people play with that, but when they see the chart, they get very um, confused and overwhelmed because there's a lot of information there. So I've been there, I, um, it's like going into a rabbit hole, is there's a lot of uh, information that can be obtained from your chart. But if you only do this um, mentally, through mental processing, you're, you're not going to master or realign to your chat. Yeah. So I find that with my gift of being able to sense the health of their centers or gates or channels, uh, it tends to make the path a lot easier and faster. And it's a lot more meaningful for the client as well. Yeah. So basically you can, you can work with people who are beginners in human yes. design. Um, but also for some people watching this are familiar with it and then they can uh, kind of use your uh, sensitivity and your healing and your, and your coaching to kind of go further with it. Yes. So I, I do find that I work best with clients who are a bit more playful and um, they are willing to be more proactive in their learning. So I, I don't want to be the healer who just does things, uh, do things to them. So it has, I feel it has to be a, a two-way process so that um, there's a lot of learning and wisdom and they can move on. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Um, anything else you want to share with us as we kind of complete this uh, conversation? Um, I, I do have a, a YouTube video that's a more introductory video to explain the, the five major energy types in the human design chart. So I'll be happy to share that uh, with the audience. Yes. So um, I'll I put the link. Put the link. I will share the link with you. Yes. Yes. The link. So those of you watching this, if you look at the description of the video, there should be a link either above or below wherever you're watching this. Yeah. And then you have, um, so of course, people who are interested can contact you to work with you. Um, we can maybe also put the link to get the chart, the human design chart for those yes. who don't have one. Okay. So we'll put that sure. in the description of the video. And uh, once they have a chart, then they can contact you and kind of do further work there. Um, and you also mentioned you have an online course. Yes, I'm currently improving on it. So uh, I'd love for you to get on board if you're interested. Just and the, uh, drop the top, me an email. Yes, yeah. and the topic of the course, maybe uh, share with us again. Uh, it's, it's about being a happy sensitive. The, the main aim would be to, like what I said, to understand and manage your sensitivity through your human design chart. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Bings, for uh, sharing with us this presentation and uh, for the work that you do with your clients. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for thank having you. me.